a low. It's the fewest claims in any week since 1969. Now, some companies have complained they can't find workers to fill a near-record 10.4 million job openings back in September. With Thanksgiving tomorrow, this is a big travel day. Oh, my God. So much stress. She's at the airport in San Francisco. He's flying out of Fort Lauderdale. Everybody leaves the day, so... I thought I'd get here early. For six days in a row before today, more than two million passengers went through TSA checkpoints at airports on almost pre-COVID levels. Those driving could see some traffic. Many of the 48 million people that AAA predicts will drive somewhere for the holiday leave today. A Georgia jury is back deliberating this morning in the murder trial of three white men charged with targeting and killing a black man last year while he was out jogging. Jurors just asked the judge to see video and hear a 911 call again. Now, in closing arguments, security footage was a big point of contention. It showed Ahmad Arbery on several occasions inside a partially constructed house. For the defense, they made the claim that that shows Arbery was breaking the law and that he's responsible for his own fate. The prosecutor made the case that at no point did Arbery ever steal anything from that partially constructed home. Thus, the claim of citizen's arrest simply cannot stand. Fox's Steve Harrigan in Brunswick, Georgia. SpaceX launched a new NASA a mission late last night in California. On the way to humanity's first ever planetary defense test mission. That rocket is carrying what's called DART, which will be aimed at an asteroid, testing a plan to save Earth in case someday one is on a collision course to hit us like an Armageddon. But unlike the movie, DART will bump the asteroid off course, not blow it up. America's listening to Fox News. Honey, I'm officially sick of junk mail, emails, and ads about Medicare. Why are they suddenly bombarding us with this stuff? Because it's open enrollment. We could get more benefits. Clear up your Medicare confusion with simple, easy answers at easymedicare.com. That's the letter E, the letter Z, medicare.com. Annual enrollment is now through December 7th. Go to easymedicare.com or speak with a licensed agent at 1-888-486-1662. Easymedicare.com. We make choosing a Medicare plan easy. Speak with a licensed insurance agent or visit easymedicare.com Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. ESD, Saturday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. ESD. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, has neither reviewed nor approved this information with regard to the federal Medicare program. Easymedicare.com is powered by e-telecode insurance agent, private, duly licensed insurance agency, appointed by Medicare Advantage, HMO, PPO, and PFFS plans, and standalone prescription drug plans and insurance companies, holding Medicare contracts approved by CMS. Enrollment in any plan for coverage is subject to insurance company approval. This information is not a complete description of benefits. Contact the plan for more information. Limitations, co-payments, and restrictions may apply. Benefits, premiums, and or member cost share may change on January 1 of each year. You must continue paying your Medicare Part B premium. Well, stocks are falling the day before Thanksgiving closes. Wall Street, Fox's Lillian Wu has market and economic numbers live here in New York. Dave, many investors not buying despite that blowout jobless claims report just in showing a drop to 1969 levels for those filing for first-time benefits. The Dow is down about 120 points, S&P off by 13, and NASDAQ sinking 60 with tech names continuing to weigh on the benchmark retailers. Also a drag on the market, Gap tumbling more than 20 percent, Nordstrom 27 percent, with both companies reporting earnings misses for the most recent quarter. Dave? Well, and the price of oil is barely budging, still above 78 bucks a barrel. Gas is down slightly, while much is made of the big increase over last year. AAA's national average for regular is almost two cents down from a week ago, just under 3.40 a gallon. It's a buck 29 more than last year. The sexual misconduct scandal swirling around a hockey team may be moving toward a settlement. The attorney for Kyle Beach confirmed Tuesday that the former Chicago Blackhawks player is headed into mediation with the NHL franchise in an effort to settle his lawsuit. Susan Loggins confirmed the judge overseeing this case has denied her motion to move the case into the discovery phase, which would have opened the way for each side to procure evidence. Mediation is expected to begin on December 5th. Beach is seeking in excess of $50,000 in damages after he says the Blackhawks ignored his allegations of sexual assault against former assistant coach Brad Aldrich back in 2010. An independent investigation into the matter earlier this year showed the complaint was largely ignored. Matt Napolitano, Fox News. The NHL recently fined the Blackhawks $2 million after an investigation showed the team mishandled the allegations. General Manager Stan Bowman resigned. And the head coach of the Blackhawks at the time in 2010, Joel Quenville, was also named in the report, and he then resigned as the head coach of a different NHL team, the Florida Panthers. I'm Dave Anthony. This is Fox News. WPTV First Alert Weather on WSTU is brought to you by Code Red Roofers. Code Red Roofers cares and calls you back, shows up, and finishes on time. 287-2829.
Code Red Roofers, the roofers who respond. Now here's the first alert meteorologist. This afternoon, highs in the low 70s, partly sunny skies with some passing showers possible throughout the day. Tomorrow morning, temperatures warming into the low to mid 60s. Afternoon highs in the mid 70s, plenty of sunshine with an isolated shower. Friday, similar weather to Thursday, but a bit more mild. Morning temperatures in the low to mid 60s. Afternoon highs in the mid to upper 70s. Some showers possible with a cold front on the way. That cold front moving in over the weekend, reinforcing that cooler air. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Katya Hall for WSTU 1450, Martin County's Heritage Station. You are listening to WSTU, Stewart, Jensen Beach, Hope Sound, Martin County's Heritage Station. It's time now for the Casey Ingram Show on WSTU. The opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not necessarily those of WSTU. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. It's time to call in with your questions and comments at 220-9788, 220-WSTU. And now, here's Casey Ingram. Well, here it is. Happy hump day right here uh, in the WSTU studios coming out of our beautiful uh, Treasure Coast area in Stewart, Florida. Folks, I can't believe it. We are coming down to the end of the year. And uh, for those of you that have followed my show for a few years, you know I go on hiatus in December. So this is my last live show of the year. And uh, looking forward to next year. I have some great shows that are lined up beginning of the year next year already. Um, we're going to have Ted Astolfi with the Economic Council. It's going to be an interesting show because the Economic Council has been really working behind the scenes and trying to bring in new um, educational or, or schools, trade schools here to the area. So he's going to tell us a lot about what they've been doing this last year. Uh, Nancy Smith, uh, she's going to be in the studio just to talk about her career as a journalist. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, attend a, a function where they were raising a uh, money for scholarships at the Indian River uh, Community College. And uh, your state college, I think it's called. And uh, Nancy uh, talked about her life's work, and it was so fascinating. I said, Nancy, I hope you can come on the show and, and share that with the listeners. So she's going to be on in January. Um, we're going to have uh, Dr. Malay, superintendent of Martin County Schools, on again. And, of course, you know, we couldn't uh, – not have at the beginning of the year my my buddy my partner uh talk about martin's eric miller so hey, eric, i'm going on hiatus too coming up just not with you <laughs> that's right we're both gonna be on separate hiatus right on man right on it's a good time of year to do that and you know what eric i hmm. keyed up my facebook today and you know what came up in memories i don't know it was the last show last year and who was on it Eric Miller. Wow, we've talked what a about track Martin. record. I know. So this is going to wow. become a tradition now, I think. I don't know. That sounds <laughs> like a winner in a row. to me. It's, Do it's I need a, to start starting. bringing a wreath or something? I, I know, you know? Exactly. Bring some, you know. <laughs> Maybe, you know. A side a, dish, so, a casserole for the last Turkey show Turkey Day tomorrow, year. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Well, happy so. Thanksgiving to you. Happy holiday season as we kick it off. Yes, yes. You know? Same to you, Eric. Uh, you know, it's been a wonderful year, and I've really enjoyed having you in the studio Thank contributing throughout the year. being here. It's a lot of fun. And, and folks, you know, if you have a – we're, we're kind of having an open topic today, uh, talk about various uh, items. So if you have something you want to talk about, you certainly can type it in on the Facebook Live feed on my Facebook page, The Casey Ingram Show, or just call the studio, 772-220-9788. That's 220-WSTU. And, you know, we talk about a lot of different things. But, Eric, do you know what? We have a, a new multi-million – dollar resident coming to jupiter island of course i saw that Did isn't this so that? exciting to know that Folks, nancy palauzi is going to be Palo palauzi yeah. palauzi is that, <laughs> how she, that that's how she, <laughs> it's kind of coming out that way you know and well let's let's folks let's face it insider trading pays off she has a 25 million dollar uh, vacation home right here in martin county so well she learned from um, the best too her husband in baltimore um, served for a number of years before they moved out to the left coast, and now they're coming back home, as they say, and chickens will come home to roost. They're coming home you know, to roost, and, so uh, you know, back it's... Back to uh, the East Coast. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. She's coming here to our, our Red Martin County, oh, but... Good Lord. You know, uh, <laughs> I thought, I thought, oh, yep, 
so just just to remind everybody on the insider trading stuff, I had a few updates on that. But you know, she has made uh, her total premiums was over forty two million to one hundred and thirty six million dollars over the last just couple years. Mm. Over eighty two transactions. Her average premium or profit is five hundred nineteen thousand to one point six million. It's a range. They don't have to report exactly what they make. It's a range, so you have mm. to guess. And uh, her one-year returns for her stock is uh, over 45%. Her options returns are almost 67%. So the average returns are 56%. But the S&P, which has been amazing performing, was just 36%. So they need to really get their their tips from Nancy Pelosi because, you know. Yeah, there's nothing going on there. That you know that. Yeah. How how else could you afford a twenty five million dollar oh, mansion know. in Jupiter Island? In Jupiter Island, and mm-hmm. and that's that's you know not the only home. So, um, since our last show, forty seven members of Congress on last show on soon on uh, insider trading, forty seven members of Congress have violated laws designed to stop insider trading and prevent conflicts of interest. I Anybody wanted to, we know? Yeah, it's just going to go over the Florida <laughs> ones. You know, we won't go over all forty seven. No, but let's, not necessarily. Let's, see. Let's, let's stay close to home here. You know, ethics watchdogs and just a few in Congress want to ban lawmakers from trading individual stocks, but too many of them are making money for this to, uh, I think, actually pass. But uh, that uh, there was a stock act that was um, passed back in 2012, and you know when they violate the stock act, you know, making their millions of dollars on the insider trading, mm-hmm. $200 is a standard fine. Sometimes they get a pass though because uh, you know it can be waived by the House and Senate ethic officials. So you know yeah, it's a real like a- real penalty. You know if you you violate that, but who who has violated uh, the stock act? Uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Democrat from Florida, and uh, she was months late reporting four stock trades made either by herself or her child. Oh, and wait, there's more. This one we all know in CD18. That's Representative Brian Mast, mm. and he's Republican. He was late disclosing that he'd purchase up to $100,000 in stock in an aerospace company. By the way, the president of the company had just testified before a congressional subcommittee on which our Representative Mast sits. How convenient. It's very, no, again, it's... You Did get he buy that, or were they given? Does it show whether the stocks were given to them or whether they actually took money out of pocket? Because I'm having a hard time figuring out, knowing Brian from personal conversations with him, that he shared with me in, in I'm not even going to say confidence at this point because he is who he is, mm-hmm. um, that, 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 you know, f- things were tight financially. And I understand that uh, being being you know where things were when he came out of the military That's right. and the the obstacles that he had to overcome with his family but how do we go now to making hundred thousand dollar stock trades when he was trying to raise a mortgage to buy a house to be even be able to carpet bag up here in cd18 to get into congress so you know, I think there's there could be there could be more than meets the eye to a lot of this, and I would ask too: Does any of this kind of influence? Now, that, I mean, we all know that, that that there is a lot of corruption within the political system, mm-hmm. and it's getting really close to home at this point. But is you know how close to home does it actually get? Can you look at your county level and your state level as well and begin to see these types of influences? Not necessarily with insider stock trading. But, you know, take a look and keep an eye on things, because if there's corruption in one place, you're going to find it in another if the systems are like. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, the Stock Act only applied to federal representatives, so yeah, it doesn't apply to our, our local officials or state officials, so we don't really know what's going on there. And, and even the Stock Act, it, it's almost a joke. It's almost impossible to really trace their right. trades, and they have, I think it's up to 60 days to report it. It's It's... And it's, again, it's just a range. And then if they don't report it, oh, well, maybe a $200 okay, fine. Okay, so are we splitting I, hairs? You know. I mean, let's play the other side of the fence for the people that are sitting out sure, there for a second sure. and ask the question. So we should tell anybody that we elect that you can't make any money and trade stocks? Do you know how expensive it is to live if you want to make investments? You're going you're gonna to go up there and you're going to have to sacrifice? Well, you're only, what, you're only making us a what, 179000 a year or something? I mean, it's Well, it's I still tough have to live in D.C. D.C. is expensive to live in, so I should not be able to trade? Well, you know, I think there's another thing you can do here, Eric. And by the way, since our last show, 
the Federal Reserve Bank officials, a couple of them had to step down for the same type of thing. <laughs> it was a, a type of insider trading. Uh-huh. Uh, Fed uh, presidents Robert Kaplan and Eric Rosengren stepped down from their roles after reports revealed that they bet on real estate and individual stocks. Um, the central bank's number two official was also caught, which is Richard Clarita, for rotating millions of dollars out of bond funds and into stock funds in February of 2020, right before the Fed started making emergency actions. Uh, Kaplan was the former president of the Dallas Federal Reserve Bank and former partner at Goldman Sachs, traded millions of dollars of stock in 22 companies. Rosengren, formerly president of the Boston Fed, invested in real estate funds that owned mortgage-backed bonds of the same type the Fed itself started buying. So Richard Clarita sold between a million and five million dollars of shares in bond funds and purchased shares in two stocks on February 27, 2020. The trades occurred a day before the Fed issued a statement saying it was closely monitoring the emerging pandemic and its economic impact. The Fed cut its benchmark interest rate just a few days later. Now, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said during a congressional hearing that the trades by Rosengren and Kaplan seem to be in compliance with the existing rules, which, quote, just tells you that the problem is that the rules and the practices and the disclosure needs to be improved, and that's what they're working on. And they did work on it, Eric. Um, they have actually, in last month, October 2021, They banned individual stock purchases by top officials at the central bank and unveiled a broad set of other restrictions on their investing activities roughly six weeks after these reports broke on this trading. Hmm. So now there is an outright ban on purchases of individual stocks or holding individual bonds. However, they are able to still invest by, they have rules where they can send it through brokers and let the broker invest for them so it doesn't in a trust in a a trust in a blind blind investment trust that's exactly right so it doesn't prevent them from having investments but it prevents them from using their insider knowledge their influence on the investments or writing regulations that that's right correct that would influence how companies uh whether or not they are awarded contracts or well, this is even a bigger problem. This is symptomatic of something, I think, that's bubbling up out of the ooze that we've all known is there. But when you start looking at the this Build Back Better project that they're talking about and the administration saying how they want public-private partnerships, as James Stack was talking about on, on the, the show that we did last mm-hmm. with him, at a level that now the corporations and the government are in bed together, you know, they've taken away the mask. You don't have to trade anymore. Whoever's in office gets to pick the winners, and the yeah, winners right. get to pick the people that go into the office. So it becomes less of a, a, a democratic republic and more of an oligarchy. It truly does. And let's go back to Representative Mast for a second. You were just uh, talking about when you first met with him, you know, it, it's a struggle sometimes to make ends meet. It's, mm-hmm. it's tough. And, you know, my how things have changed. I think he's running for his fourth term. Uh, coming up here this next time around, 2022. In 2021, he had total uh, profits of a million to 3.2 million. His average profit per transaction was between 17,000 and 52,000 over 62 total trades. Mm. So uh, our representative Mast is doing very well with his stock trading now that he's in Congress. Kind of kind it of amazing like, when you look at his financials when he started compared to what they are now. So, Yeah, I think it's um, very telling. It, it truly is. And there's there's more, and I, I'll, I'll cover the other ones. And, folks, this is a, a Democrat and a Republican issue. It's, it's both. Um, it's, it's an American issue. It's an American issue. This is issue. an American issue. And the Republicans and Democrats, neither are acting like Americans at this point. This is how, you know, I, don't get me started on that one. Well, it's, they get elected into office, and, wow, lo and behold, look at all, you know, Look what we have for information. Yeah, but Look we're what we electing can a party. We're not electing individuals to office anymore. We're not and anymore. that's the problem. Where if you're in, if you're in my party, Sarah Hurd's a perfect example of that. Like her or not, Sarah Hurd is not a Republican by any stretch of the imagination. She may be re- she may be registered as one, 
you know, but there's an interesting definition of Republicans in this county anyway. So. so you're saying just because they have an R behind their name doesn't mean a Republican or a D makes them a Democrat. Correct. It's, you need to look at the individual person and find out what they stand for, how they're going to vote. Do yeah. you agree with that in Republican principles? Well, think about it. If I want to get into office, all right, first of all, I would have shut my mouth years ago and would have quit upsetting as many people <laughs> as I have. But Glad you didn't, Eric. But anybody that wants to get into office you, you and, and you live in any particular geography— you have a dominant party usually uh, within that area that you live in. And if you want to get in, you're going to go with the winning That's team right. to get yourself into the place that you want to be because the party be damned, you're going in with an agenda nine times out of ten. You know? Absolutely. And, and, and to go in as a party candidate, I'll tell you what, from experience, there are no party candidates. The party is recruiting candidates that will play the game with them, like Brian Mass, that will come to the table and be rewarded with these types of things to get his way out. He turned as soon as he got up there. That's right. They it's, got him. The machine got him. Uh, and this happens at a local level as well as at a state 100%. level. 100%. You know, it, it's, and, it's a party. Don't, don't vote for the, the letter on the sweater. <laughs> agree 100 percent and you need to look beyond the, the popular name you need to look beyond just maybe maybe you like that person we like brian because he's a veteran he, he's a wounded veteran but that's a plus in his column it is it is and we appreciate that service there's no doubt about it right on but is he upholding what conservatives and republican values that we elected him to do and that's what no, folks need to look at he's not no, he hasn't. He hasn't. he's not he's not reflecting well see we had something we used to say in the in the military and that is are you reflecting well upon your unit are you reflecting well upon yourself and, and on your on your comrades the people that you're standing with are you reflecting is what i'm doing reflecting well upon my unit and I think Brian needs to ask himself that at this point, is what he's doing reflecting well upon the American uh, principles that he supposedly went to defend and, and, and uphold? Because a lot of what he's doing, a ban on, on uh, uh, weapons, is not constitutional. Well, not just Brian, but I think voters need to look at who they're electing. Are you happy with that? I mean, that's... With these candidates that get into office, it's very tough to get an incumbent out. Why is that? I mean, I think people are not looking at their voting record. They're not following them enough, and they just see that popular name on a sign. Well, yeah, we have screens in our The average person has a screen in their face all day long. You know, they're being bombarded with what they're supposed to be looking like, what they're supposed to be driving, what they're supposed to be thinking. Everything is pre-programmed to, to keep you moving in this retail-centric environment. And thank goodness maybe the little bit of the retail-centric environment starting to break down and people are having to get back around maybe to a little bit more agrarian agri sense about themselves right. i know that that fight or flight's coming out in a lot of people and they don't know why as much anymore but their environment's changing and things are not the way that look when when you have when you your energy energy secretary for the united states of america says that we're going to go through some oil and gas prices as we transition to a non-oil and gas based right. economy you know what's coming kids so right. buckle up that's right and, and 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 let's put some people at the helm at least before this ship cracks up to the point that there's no helm to recover and it goes again beyond the r and the d you've got a guy like you said here's a guy that's a, a wounded combat veteran that is is completely shredding the honor of what it means to be a republican to begin with this insider trading that's going on not that republicans are you know, both sides but again it, it, <laughs> anything, it's a very unethical at, at the very least yeah. and it's illegal for anybody else outside of capitol hill to have yeah, no, it's immoral you go to serve and brian should understand serving and this is not service this is taking advantage of a situation it's taking advantage of a position for sorry something. i don't mean to be so hard on brian but brian represents us in cd18 he represents me and that's not the character of the individual that I want to see taking my message to Washington, D.C. You know what? Why don't we start doing Zoom meetings for these guys and let these guys sit in district? 
Right. Let's take away having to go up to Congress to vote. They can vote here. They're telling us that digital voting machines are safe. Well, they can put themselves on a digital voting machine, and they can stay in district. And once the people have more access to them while they're voting, right. I think some votes might change. Uh, Alicia Parentel, thanks for tuning in. She says, uh, Brian Mast is not a constitutional conservative. He is good at writing letters, but has done nothing new or different to bring new federal dollars to our area. Ouch. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the thing. That, but Alicia, obviously, she's somebody that's in tune and following who she's voting for, who she's yeah. electing. And that's, folks, that's what you have to do. And that's what we're begging. And we're going to really cover that next year as the election comes up in 2022. We're Let's get off of Brian because I, it's really it, it really is a sore thumb with me um, and and uh, well, it's all I, I've even reached out to talk with Brian and Brian won't reach back out to me so I I, I don't like I don't like letting those kinds of things sit out there and fester but I think Brian has let us all down in a big way and I that's that's a personal feeling of well and next year's another election and it is and i'm getting the ready same for way, it though. we're, we're going to redo some things on talk about martin over the holidays while we go on our hiatus, our hiatus. we're still <laughs> working and, but behind the scenes and i want to put an election section together so that we can feature as many of the uh, election centric type things that are going on and make it easy for people to find out what these people are saying that are asking for your money and your vote right Right, and that's very important. I mean, that's what it's about is education. I always try to have the candidates on. I don't tell them they're right or wrong. I don't tell them their stance, if right. I agree with it or not. Right. I want to hear what they think and what they stand for. Um, and I think that's really important. And then, then we'll see, you know, if they get elected, if they stay true to what they said. So, and unfortunately, more often than not, they don't. Not, that's not true of all elected officials, thank goodness. But Well, the system grabs them at a certain point, too, and we've talked about that. The right. administrative state takes away the power that you think you're going up there with because you're given false choices because the regulatory state is giving you the choices right. to make. Right. right. So it's it's, it's let, in a bad place. Let me cover a couple others. I, I wanted to finish with uh, the um, 47 members of Congress that violated the uh, Stock Act and um, just the ones from Florida. The other ones are Representative John Rutherford. He's a Republican from Florida. Uh, he pr uh, failed to properly disclose five individual uh, stock transactions in 2020. Representative Kathy Castor, she's a Democrat from Florida, and she was also late disclosing the purchase of tens of thousands of dollars worth of stock shares throughout 2021. So that was our, our Florida representatives that, you know, but again, it's a $200 fine, and it could even be waived by the ethics committees so it, my it's, dog it's, ate my lunch <laughs> that's right my, i forgot nice way. Fine Oops, i didn't realize that Fine so um i have to break for one second because i need to let everybody know i, I appreciate the sponsors here in um locally and helping to bring my show and one thing with the show is I just like to bring community issues. I like to bring people on so that we have a chance to find out about new organizations or things that are, are happening in the, the area and the community, laws that are being passed, regulations or nonprofits. There's just so many different things. And I couldn't do this without the help of folks like uh, Fish House Art Center and Indian Town Marina. Uh, Fish House Art Center is a really cool little spot. It's down in Port Salerno. It's a lot of fun, and they call themselves the best kept secret in Martin County. And I agree, if you're down in Port Salerno, you have to check out the uh, Fish House Art Center. Come by boat, car, or stroll the boardwalk to explore what the best kept secret has to offer. Their boardwalk features local artists, an Airbnb, art gallery, boat charters, marina, craft and creamery, craft beers, wine, and 24 flavors of ice cream. So there's something for the entire family. Bike rentals, sales, accessories are available at Kraken Bikes and Boards. And if you're a beach person, you can get a paddleboard. Liquid Aloha has you covered for the water with sales, accessories, and the paddleboard rentals. Um, they also have refurbished furniture, monogram cutting boards, and so much more. And this is all at the Fish House Art Center in Port Salerno. It has a marina there. They have slips available. And uh, you can... Give them a call at 772-221-5482 or find out more at the fishhouseartcenter.com. Fun, fun spot here right in Port Salerno, right in the heart of Martin County. And also Indian Town Marina. Uh, this is a great marina, a safe hurricane hole. Thank goodness we've made it through hurricane season. I think we can officially say we made it through this year. I think it ends the end of the month. But, Works for me. You know, but there's nothing else out there right now. But 
not only that, they um, great for boat storage. And right now, with it being winter, it might be a good time to do bottom painting or electrical work, mechanical work. You can do it yourself there, or you can hire someone to do the work for you, and that's at Indian Town Marina. Uh, you can give them a call at 772-631-3272. Again, that's 772-631-3272. Indian Town Marina, great place to take your boat. And also commercial mortgage, uh, forbearances, working remotely, internet shopping, retail space, and rental income have been hit so hard by COVID. If you're looking to restructure your debt, obtain financing or equity, Commercial Mortgage can help you out. Tim Mullen at Commercial Mortgage has been providing debt restructuring services since 2003. Tim never charges a front fee and all consultations are free. Tim only gets paid if he provides you a debt workout. So if you need some help right now with everything that's been going on with COVID, give Tim a call. He might be able to help you out. Uh, 772-872-6099, 872-6099. Or you can visit commercialmortgagellc.com to schedule your free consultation. And finally, I need to remind everybody, I'm very excited about this. It's the Carnival of Lights have come to Martin County, and it's thanks to our fair. Martin County Fair Association is putting this on. It starts November 26th, so it's coming up this weekend. It's every weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays from 5.30 to 9. They're going to have music, crafters, food, rides. The model are uh, railroad clubs out there and just so much more. Only $10, and if you're 12 and under, the admission's free. So it's, let's uh, go out there, support our fair, and it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be Christmas trees and all kinds of Christmas decorations, and it's going to put us in the spirit because it's it's time. I mean, it's ho, it's ho, the ho. holiday season, so it is. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> so, <laughs> Get the nog. Let's go. I know. Go. I know. I, it's I, time to snog. I needed to reach out to Jay to find out if there's going to be something in that eggnog, but I don't know uh, that yet. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, they had a beer tent for the fair. I they know. better have a snog tent. I little took a, Captain Morgan sponsored it, snog tent. It, it sounds good, this snog tent. I, <laughs> yeah. I tell you, I stopped out there to give my banner out there for the, the sponsorship, and there was a whole cart full of empty beer cans. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you guys must have had one heck of a party. So <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh no, that was from the fair. And I'm like, oh well, I'll check it out. Sounds it's Carnival like of Lights, I know. <laughs> so it's always fun at the fairgrounds. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Got to check out the Martin County Fair. But, um, you know, we're talking about different things that are happening here, and one hot issue that's been going on is the comp plan at the uh, county commission martin county commission and right now there was some as i understand it uh, a mandated change through the state that they had to work on and it's chapter 19 in the comp plan and at the same time they're proposing to remove chapter 2 in the comp plan they said there was things that were just redundant mm -hmm. and Folks, this is where it really has paid off for for residents to become involved and reach out because your voice does matter. And there were so many people that said, no, 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 wait, we need to go through Chapter 2. There's, there's redundancies, but there's also some things that are not redundant. You're calling redundant. And what happened at Tuesday's meeting is they, they went ahead and approved Chapter 19, but for Chapter 2, they're going to slow down a little bit, listen to public comment, hold some workshops. And, uh, you know, Commissioner Campy uh, suggest or put the motion in. Uh, Commissioner Jenkins seconded it, but they all supported that. And uh, really, if you listen to that meeting, it was. Uh, people were very passionate about our comp plan. And for those of you who don't know, the, the comp plan is just a pillar of our community. It, it dictates the four-story height limit, has the urban service boundary. It tells different zoning issues, where you can build, what kind of companies uh, can, can build there, whether it's a, a commercial or residential or multifamily, all those things. And Iggy, I have a, um, a graphic I just wanted you to put up. One thing I've noticed with these meetings, and there is a lot of new building that is going on, people are <laughs> like, the right the county commission say, oh, how can you allow this? How did you allow Costco? And the graphic that Iggy has put up now, and for listeners, if, if you can't see it, just Google City of Stewart Boundary. And uh, or, or even zoning, and you'll see a map of the city of Stewart. So if it's within that map, the county commission has nothing to do with it. Right. Then you need to talk to the city commissioners about that, and vice versa. The city commer uh, commissioners have no Don't say run in the out county of room soon enough, unless they so, start annexing. 
Well, that's they talked a little bit about that. They they basically the county said we really can't stop the city from annexing. Nope. It's the property owner's right. If they want to annex their property, they can. And, and they're smack dab in the middle of the county, just like Saint Port Saint Lucie was they are. up here. And you you now have the seventh largest city in Florida, just one county to our north. So, yep, because of the annexation. Port St. Lucie. Yeah. And if you look at that map, you can see how the annexation happens because it has to be a contiguous property. Right. So if it's contiguous, the guy that was in the county, if he's touching a city property, he could say, I'd like to annex my property, and they can. So, yeah. And that's why the map looks so f- funky. I mean, it's, there's no – there are – no straight boundaries yeah, i mean no. it's just all over the place you can kind of see fingers here and there so yeah. um so it's really important though to know if you're if you have whether it's a compliment or a complaint to know who to send that to and you know within that boundary it's it's city commissioners and outside there's the county so that was something that came up yesterday and i thought that would almost be a good show in itself is just explaining the the county uh, zoning ordinances and who's responsible for the zoning in which areas right. and indian town has its own now right yeah, the yeah. village of Indian Town now has its own set. Uh, if you can fathom it, <laughs> <laughs> you know that Scott Scott with the uh, with Indian Town Marina has has talked about this on your show before. Some of the some of the oddities that are in it are incredible, but the documents do do actually govern the way that this county is supposed to to end up and how we're supposed to do things and what's supposed to happen let me let me ask you a question we were talking in the in the prior half hour about power and how the 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 power at the higher levels has allowed for this corruption to come in that there's just too much power and the people and they're not close enough to the people and when you look at the situation here in martin county let's just look at it as martin county is the entire the entire universe at this point there's a lot of power in those five seats in those five those five commission seats that we have we're we're chopped up into five districts and you know you it sounds it sounds very boring and that's the other thing i'd like to talk about as a citizenry when we get a chance is how do you and that's the age-old question how do you get the citizenry reinvigorated back into the process to where they just have to pay attention that's that's what's required of us pay attention and take action when you see things that are wrong that are taking place that's all we have to do as citizens but the power that's rolled into these these seats is 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 pretty strong and i think we're getting to a point now both in a tax base and a population level and just where the the climate is in florida right now to take a look at a statute that exists that would allow us to put to referendum a change in the way that we actually elect our county commissioners and what it would do is take these five districts that we already have drawn they're drawn by state law and you would still draw the districts the way that the state law mandates them but they would change now to district commissions uh meaning or commissioners meaning that they would only be elected by the people within their district they would not be elected at large so no one in jensen beach would be voting for someone for um western martin county which half of this county if you drive to okeechobee the amount of time that you take driving through western old florida back there uh is still martin county all the way up to 15b where the grade comes out so changing it to where we localize those people closer to the demographic living within the district itself then on top of that the statute allows for two more commissioners we'd go from five to seven and it would put two at large which would be elected by the at large community in martin county so you would still have that voice of this is what's best for the county but then each district would have but this is bad for my district which they would have to maintain because they have to be elected by the people in their district as well so it's um which leads me then into a referendum which costs uh, y- y- to do a referendum you're probably going to spend 30 to 70 thousand dollars in an election cycle to get enough referendums to get on ballot signatures on a referendum right. ballot but it seems to me like a good investment for some people that might want to consider starting a third political 
uh, party or movement within Martin County to take that opportunity to organize um, around it and find a way to build some infrastructure to begin changing some things in the community that we live in. Not that things are terrible or that they're collapsing, but I think that we need to pull some reins in. We need to tighten some screws down and, and slow some things down. Um, you know, the waste management thing is a, is a perfect example of that. And the size of the government and what it's taking for this. We're turning into a regulatory bureaucratic mm-hmm. environment here in Martin County, too. I think we need to pair some of that back. So, folks, if you want to join the conversation or, or have a comment about this, uh, 772-220-WSTU-220-9788. Also, I'm watching my Facebook live feed. If you want to uh, have a comment or question, certainly put it in there as well. And Eric, you know, it's funny that you bring up the commission districts because that I've always thought that. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. why do we have districts when everybody's voting on them anyway? <laughs> you know, it's like if it's important to that district, my district population isn't enough maybe to elect who we want because it's a countywide, right. you know, election that, that the votes come in. So having a commissioner elected by that district only by that district makes complete sense to me i mean otherwise well see that's why and i'm going to speculate on something here and and go back because the slush funds that they have the six figure slush funds that they get to use i think came about because of that problem that you're speaking about in the dynamic why have a district if you are supposed to be my district commissioner why aren't you bringing more to the district so if i give you the money to go ahead and write checks to the people that are you know why aren't you doing that here how much do you need five thousand ten thousand here's a check now be quiet i know these these slush funds are our tax money that's another thing that i and now some of it's gone to some pretty good uses it does however i don't like giving an open checkbook to a uh an elected official right i mean what are we doing right what are we doing? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing it? And I think it goes back to the dynamic again that, well, uh, I voted for it because it was better for the whole county. We sacrificed. I mean, you know, there's no district representation, like you said. If, the, if I know isn't. I'm going to get elected by the people in my district, I'm going to represent Western Martin You're County if I'm, a, if I'm a Campy or a Jenkins in those two districts. Right. I know where the money is in Western Martin County, and some of it's in, in Palm City, some of it's in Hove Sound, but there are some serious pockets in Western Martin County right. that I don't think people know exist, and it could really change a lot of dynamics politically within this county, and I don't think for the worst. I think we could get back to uh well get back i think that we could we could have a less uh litigious county let's just put it that right way. I think right there's there's some things that could change we we could scale the government back and and the whole dynamic once you scale government back the dynamic changes from there it's not a predictability but you know i can tell you that i think it would scale the size back i really do it would be very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. I'm like, okay, we're adding two more commissioners, so there's more government officials. But you're making them, the, the, the five of them, as you said, would certainly be uh, committed to their district instead of committed to an overall see who I can get election donations from. And you're going to a pretty from. good argument from them as to why, if it affected their district, they went ahead and voted for it when it benefited somebody right. else's district. The right. you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours that goes on with this is is kind of, you know, it, that, it is what it is. Well, it's, it's human nature, but I like the idea of, of those two more people, Casey, if I can, because five adults have a hard enough time coming up with something that they agree That's on right. seven are going to have even a harder time it's going to slow the process down and it's, well and they're accountable it to a different their, dynamic now. and five of them are very accountable to their districts now where now they're they're just not right uh, because you have the countywide election and you know politics are really funny i i remember um uh congressman murphy at the time had a uh uh a fundraiser meeting and he spoke about what it was like in Washington DC you know he went there as this young man and all charged up with energy to you know to change the world and when he got there he found out you know how it really works is your aides as you're walking onto the floor say okay this is how you're gonna vote today he said your primary duty is to raise funds 
in his case, for, for the, the Democratic party. party, but for whichever party it is, he goes, yeah. that's your primary duty. And if you don't raise enough funds, they don't give you money back to get elected in and your campaigns. And you don't campaigns. get committee assignments. You don't get committee assignments. So, so you can't make the insider trades. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> this yeah, all comes full circle. Yeah, no, and that's what but, I'm saying. It works in the Republican Party and the Democratic Party both the same way. And, and that's where the labels, that's where that honor goes back to the label that you wear. If you're going to wear a shirt that says Army, show the honor of the Army while you're wearing the shirt. Don't go out and be a bum. Don't flip somebody off while you're driving. You know, if you're going to be a congressman, go up and act like a congressman with the honor that's deserved the title that you're borrowing for a little while that we're letting you use. Don't go up there and be a bum. And, and, and there's just there's too much of the honor that's lost because I think the constituency doesn't expect to see it anymore. We want to see it, but we don't. Why why aren't why aren't people why aren't people doing more to make sure that it happens? There has to be the dynamic from the constituency, and it goes beyond the phone call and the email. But there has to be a personal dynamic that takes place. That's the zeitgeist of the day. You just right. don't feel comfortable going out and being that person that says, well, they're just politicians. No, they're not just politicians. They represent us, and they need to get back to acting that way. For those of you that are tuning in on the radio and can't see uh, through the Facebook Live video, Eric's wearing his Army shirt today. So oh, that, that, that was a I? yep. There was a reason why he said that, and, and Eric is always thank you for your service. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you talk about that with uh, Congress. The other thing that I think term limits are, are necessary. Yeah. Um, this is what happens. It seems like the longer they're in Congress, the what further they get away from their constituents. It's like you look at donors that are completely outside, nothing to do with our district, nothing to do with our state, that are bringing these uh, congressmen back in and women. Well, there's another dynamic for you. It'd be interesting to watch and see how many outside contributors actually gave to a county district See, right. race <laughs> right. or are they raising their funds from within the district right. so these things are telltale but they don't mean an amount to a hill of beans just like the congressional unless the people pay attention to it and then uh, I, I guess what's going to have to happen is people are just going to have to get to a tipping point that they say enough is enough but but then what where do they go to the republican party the democratic party or do they turn to where they're going right now to just frustration look at san francisco and the west coast where it's just it's it's gone to hell in a handbasket, and it's here now. This 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 collapse of morality is in our borders now, and yes. we're lucky to be where we are. Speaking of Thanksgiving, right? Not right. everything's a downer. We're in a very good place, but you don't keep good without working to maintain it. You, you have, have to. to maintain it. And it takes self-sacrifice sometimes. You need to find that 15, 20 minutes in a day just to look and say, are things really working the way that they should be working in the world? Did we do the right thing? Okay, you guys are doing a good job. Keep going. Or what the What heck? are you doing? Right. Yeah. And then that's where the conversations need to come back in. We need to be talking at the mailbox, at the, at the hairdresser. With, Did you see? I mean, why are they doing this at a local level? Why are they closing this road? Why are we doing that? You don't hear those conversations. You anymore. don't. The only time people seem to get involved is, is if it's in their backyard. Yep. And you know, other than that, it's it's hard yeah. to get people engaged anymore. And I, I think it is frustration for the most part. People feel like they don't have a voice. They feel like their vote doesn't count. And you know, it's and people are busy with their own lives. And it's just it, we need to give them a place that they can go where their voice does matter. And that's what you're trying to do with Talk About Martin, by the way. I, I am. I want anybody and everybody that, ha- that, that has an idea, that has a thought, that has a problem that they see that needs to be addressed, um, that, that can be addressed publicly through our system of, of, of voting and, and right. governance. Let's talk about it because there aren't enough conversations taking place like this transition from a gas based oil based economy to an electric battery solar wind farm Right. driven panacea. Well, that's the waste management thing. We actually yeah, had our county government exactly. telling a private company, if you want to do business with us, you have to have the natural gas trucks. And a county commissioner who's asking everybody, please bear with us during this transition because it's good for the environment and it's going to help with the climate change effort and yada, yada, okay. yada. Okay, and those are five Republicans, supposedly, that sit on that commission. Y'all can go find out which commissioner it was and do right. some homework on it that said that, but I'll... I'll right. 
Right. And, and all those meetings, they are televised. And uh, you can go to, yeah. you know, Martin County TV and uh, you can look at any meeting and they go back years. So. so while we're all frustrated and looking for a place to land, why don't we all land in the same place and just base it upon a common set of rules that we already have called the Bill of Rights and the Constitution? And then when we get local here, we can take a look at our comp plan and make sure that the people we're electing are the people that are going to go up and do what we want them to do with that comprehensive plan. It, it's true. I, it is. It's a frustrating thing. I, I watched so many elected officials, and I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit more here to the, the term limits again, and this is on the federal thing. And not to pick on Congressman Mass because he's not the only one that has done this, but he he signed on to the, yep, three three terms and out, and now he's running for his fourth term because now he's been in Congress. Sign up for three or for four? Did he sign up for a six-year or eight-year? <laughs> it, was, it was for three terms. Was it for three? For three terms. Yes. Well, there you go. I mean, come but on, Brian. They, What's the deal, man? If you signed a pledge, you know, that just means that that pledge that you signed again, you know, how how can I hold that pledge? That, that, that We can't. That's, that's so frustrating. As you, you blow that one. How do I hold the rest of the It sounded good when you go to yeah. vote for him the first time, but then it just goes out the window. <sighs> When, when they get elected. I mean, that's and, crazy. And like I said, he's not the only one. I mean, it, it, everybody likes the sound of it. So, yeah, I'm for it. But then once they're in, they have all the benefits of, of being a, a congressman or well, woman. Well, they know and, that we're not going to do anything to keep an eye on what they're doing. That's no. that's just it. No, and, and we don't. We, we truly don't as people. And that's up to us. I mean, it really and truly is. I, I, it is. But, you know, again, how do you form a society without systems to regulate the things that affect every one of us, okay? And they don't have to be really restrictive, but governance is one that we've tried to make, our founders made the, tried to be the right. least restrictive, the most restrictive at a local level. So wouldn't you think that if the government that is to be the most restrictive is in your backyard, that you would want to at least understand what can they do and what can't they do? Are they doing what they can? Are they doing what they can't? If you Local allow government, the system right. to run itself without you being a part of the system, that system is going to do whatever it wants and you be damned because you're not putting yourself into the system. You can't rely upon everybody else to say, oh, they'll work it out for me. That workout has led you to the Republican and the Democratic Party that are both. How many people voted for the, the last $1.5 trillion next debt buster yeah, stimulus? Yeah, so, right. right. You've got to get involved at a at a basic level, just a basic level of understanding, and not be afraid to exercise your heck, even not your emotion, but your what's natural from being stepped on. Why is that guy or why is that woman doing that to me? They're not supposed to be. Who voted for you? I'll make sure I don't vote for you next time. That's it. That is it. And you can write them, you can call them. I mean, we it's just getting involved. To, so many times people get involved after the fact, after it's voted on, and it's just too late. And, you know, that's where it's just so important to just read agendas, see what's coming up here in these meetings, because you're saying it right, Eric, it starts locally, and that's what impacts us the most. Yep. Um, we talk about federal, we talk about state, but it's our local city and, and county uh, elected officials that affect us and how we do business and how we build and where, you know, how we live. Well, let's look at that seven seven commissioner structure again for a second, because okay. you had said you weren't quite too sure how it would work with two of them being, you know, the overall right. kind of. When you look at your local Republican Party, each your local Republican Party is broken down into precincts. All right. There are multiple right. individual boundary precincts of homes and residents that people can get elected to. There's a certain number based upon the population within that precinct of precinct members that can go on the ballot and by other Republicans be voted for to get a precinct committee seat to have a vote within the local Republican Party. Then from there, the county elects a state committee man and a state committee woman. And that state committee man and woman represent the county at a state level and they do not have to be precinct committeemen. So they can be separated from 
the precinct itself be an overall representative at a state level for the party. And Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. balance is that sometimes you get a number of precincts that are looking to do something to push an initiative through or something for the St. Lucie or what have you or moving in a direction. And your state committee man and woman are sitting there going, look, this isn't republicanism. This isn't this isn't what the party, the state party is looking at. So you get this balance of power and influence that okay. that takes place. Not that, you, you know, you're having cigar filled tuxedo chamber brandy sniffing right. meetings. But there is this power dynamic anytime you get people together and you give them a title of authority or position there are dynamics that take place within any of us, and, and that's what a good leader takes, is being able to identify what those human traits are and then not allowing yourself to abuse them. Right. And there's so few people within the political arena that are willing to take those steps the same way they might in their own spiritual life. True. You know, we're actually looking for people to participate in the American way of life. Right, right. I mean, next to your religion, the American way of, would you like the Chinese way of life or the Russian, the German way of life? If that's the way of life you want, go there and see if they don't make you participate. Right, right, right. (laughs) You you don't have to be a junkie on politics, but... Get involved in your community at a level that it affects you and affects somebody else positively and try to stay within the bounds of what we've all agreed on. It, That's all there is to it. It does. And, and, you know, school boards, they're going through an issue nationwide right now. Everybody's finding out how important it is who you elect on that school board because mm-hmm. what they're putting into the school system is they're the ones deciding. So if you don't know who you're electing, you know, who knows what your children are being taught, what's being yep. introduced. So. At every local level, it's so important. And I'll tell you one other thing, Eric, as, as we're on our soapbox here a little bit, um, with the commission seats, it always surprises me when I hear a commission commissioner vote, well, staff recommended it. I want you <laughs> to study it and you to know it. Not, why do I have a commissioner if you're just going to go along with what staff recommends? Well, I'll just, we let's just hire staff. staff because they're the experts. They have all these qualified globalist international standards of development <laughs> it's sustainable Wilbur. and we just talked about that right yeah. we talked about that two weeks ago the sustainability yeah. and we're going to do more shows on that as a matter of fact uh, with jim stack so yep. um but yeah that's just one thing it's like no i elected you to read that regulation and that's fine to listen to staff but i want you to make the decision not just i, I don't need to pay you to sit there and say oh staff recommended it that's it I mean, you yeah, know, exactly. Uh, I want a free thinker, an independent thinker. <laughs> right. So, um, staff may or may not uh, be. Those right. are the, that's the again. We said that earlier. Those are the false choices that are being presented to them. That's why when Murphy went there thinking he was going to change the world, he was giving a set of choices to make, neither right. one of which was going to change anything. Right. It was just which way do you want to go? Do you want the red pill or the blue pill? Right. 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 Yeah, it's a good yeah. way. It's a good way to put it. Again, folks, uh, this is the last live show of the year, and I, I appreciate every one of you tuning in and contacting me. I'm always looking for new show ideas as well. So if you have something, uh, you can message me over Facebook or you can email me the Casey Ingram Show at mail.com, and that's at mail, not Gmail. Everybody wants to put the G in there. It's not. It's M A I L at mail dot com, and going to have a lot of great shows coming up uh, in January. Again, uh, Eric Miller will be back with talk yeah. about Martin. I'm going to have the superintendent of schools back on uh, Ted Astolfi from the Economic Council, and uh, again Nancy Smith, who uh, a longtime Stewart News uh, editor here, and she's been a journalist uh, her whole life. Very interesting stories. Well, I'm going to be in high company in January. You I'll tell are. You, what. you are. We are <laughs> kicking the new year off. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, <laughs> and Eric, a talk about Martin. I you said you're kind of revamping the site a little bit, and that's, folks, check out the website. It's really what Eric has designed it for, especially here in Martin County. Let's talk about Martin. Keep you updated. That's One of right. those easy places. You know, there's other ones out there. Uh, Friends and Neighbors, Tom Campini does a good job of, yes. of monitoring the, the public meetings. You know, find somebody that you can relate to that's going to give you something that you can find easily. 
Make sure that you check them out. Don't take them as a sole source because not all of us have all of the answers. And we, you know, you don't want to follow a person like an occult. You want to be able to make up your own mind. (laughs) But at least take a look at what someone else's opinions are and figure out if you agree with them or not. They're going to give you a head start on a lot of this. And it's necessary. It is necessary because what's happening is going to affect you more and more. Just dare I say the word lockdown, mask, Band-Aid. Right. Okay, need I say any more? And we suffered a lot of that locally, too, with the maskophobia that took place. And it it became very divisive. Um, It sure did. It sure did. that's why it's important to know who you're electing. It is. Governor, (laughs) look at Governor DeSantis compared to other governors. I mean, there's a prime example. It's so important. Amen. You know, amen is right. Talk about a Thanksgiving. Yes. We're in a providential place right now, and we need to act providentially. Yes, absolutely. So... Speaking of Thanksgiving, I hope you have a wonderful one and enjoy the holidays that are coming up. And I'll definitely see you next year. Again, I want to thank uh, Indian Town Marina, Fish House Art Center, Scott Watson, uh, Commercial Mortgage, Tim Mullen. I appreciate you sponsoring the show. Uh, always, always love that. And uh, again, I appreciate you, the listeners, the most. And uh, we talk about the uh, issues that are happening in the community from local to uh, federal level, but all of them impact us. And again, show ideas, always reach out to me. I'd love to have, love to listen to new shows and have great new people on the show. And Eric, again, yes, it's been a wonderful last show, I just agree. like last year. As always, it's fun, I know, Casey. I, I mean, it. it's great. There's Eric so much Miller. going on, and hopefully we can have a positive impact in the year to come, too. You got it. Take care, folks. I'll see you next year.